Hello again and good afternoon. My name is Melissa Kaloje and I'm the Senior Marketing Director here at Attunity. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar today, AWS reInvent 2017 Briefing, the latest solutions for cloud migration, data integration, and ingestion. Before we get started, uh, Paul, if you could just move the slide, please. I'd like to introduce you to our speakers today. Paul Sears is Partner Solutions Architect at AWS, and Dan Potter is Vice President of Product Marketing and Management here at Attunity. In addition, I would like to review a few housekeeping notes for you. First, all attendees are on mute. We will have a Q&A session at the end of the session, so please submit all of your questions by the GoToWebinar questions dialog box at the right of the platform. And lastly, this webinar is being recorded and will be made available post-event for your on-demand review. We will send you all a copy by email. And with that, Paul, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, so today we're going to be covering the following items. <clears throat> we have uh, basically AWS Cloud and AWS Marketplace, how they accelerate cloud success. Um, we The announcement of of Attunity, Attunity Replicate for AWS, and then we're going to have Q&A discussion following. So AWS and Attunity offer a rich set of products to support your big data needs. So let's discover what they are. So we have our data, and we want to do something useful with it. Maybe we want to better understand how our customers are using our products, or maybe we want to use machine learning to make recommendations for our customers to give them a better experience. Our data will flow through a series of stages that will take um, the raw data um, and uh, this, it, will, it will derive some kind of value for us. And we show this process as our big data pipeline. So you have your data, you're collecting, which we call the ingest stage. After you ingest your data, you will need to store it somewhere so it can be processed. Next, you will process the data that, to maybe transform or prepare it into a form that is more consumable by your analytics tools. And once the data is processed, we can then perform our, an our analysis on that data to gain the insights and help our business. So let's take a closer look at each of these steps. AWS provides a number of easy ways to get your data into AWS. With AWS Direct Connect, for example, you can connect your on-premises data center to AWS and move your data over the network connection. You can get a single uh, direct connection up to 10 gigabits per second. Um, or maybe you have some streaming data. Let's say you want to collect quick stream data. Then you can easily use Amazon Kinesis to ingest that data. And if you have any large amount of data, uh, multi, you know, multiple terabytes or larger, uh, you might want to consider using AWS Snowball as a way to move that data into AWS. Attunity also supports the ingest stage of the pipeline with Attunity's Replicate by providing a unified solution to ingest the data from nearly any type of source system and into, the, into a, a Hadoop environment, on-premises or in the cloud. So you, we will learn more about uh, Attunity Replicate shortly. The next stage of the pipeline is, going, is storing the data um, and uh, AWS provides a number of services for this. For example, Amazon S3 which is our highly durable object store with 11 lines of durability. And uh, you can put the data in S3 based on, um, you know, based uh, in, into an S3-based data lake so that it's available to all of your processing and analytics applications uh, whenever you need it. Amazon Glacier is a highly durable archive that you can move your source um, or derived data into for long-term inexpensive storage. Um, your data can also be uh, stored in um, various database technologies, such as Amazon Redshift, which is our petabyte scale data warehouse, um, or you can use another cloud data warehouse provider, um, or you can use Amazon DynamoDB if you want a NoSQL solution, or um, Amazon RDS if you need a traditional relational database option. So the next uh, step of the pipeline is the processing phase. And this is where you perform transformations or create the derivatives of your data. For example, if you have unstructured data stored in an S3 data lake, you can use Amazon Elastic MapReduce or Amazon EMR, which is our managed big data framework for Hadoop 
to process the data and create structured derived data. Amazon EMR supports a number of applications such as Spark or Presto, Hive, TIG, HBase, and Flink. You can also deploy your own Hadoop frameworks and applications on Amazon EC2 instead of using our managed service. Uh, you can deploy solutions like Hortonworks or Cloudera. And for, and if, let's say you have streaming data, you can use Amazon Kinesis, um, which also supports processing and streaming data, or you might want to look into Apache Kafka, for example. The final component of the pipeline is where you analyze your data to gain those insights you were looking for or possibly um, discover new insights that you didn't even think of. And there are many tools to help you with this, uh, in, such as Amazon QuickSight that lets you visualize your data, Amazon Athena, where you can provide, you, which is actually a tool to allow you to perform direct queries of your structured and unstructured data that you might be, have, might be storing in an S3 data lake. And you also can use Amazon Machine Learning for predictive analytics um, by creating predictive models on the data that is stored uh, to give you better insights. So one question often comes up is, which services should you use for a particular use case? Um, so the answer really depends on the timelines and the scale of that use case. Uh, this table shows the different storage methods against the complexity of the queries of that data. <clears throat> in this table, the x-axis is the complexity of the query, and the y-axis is the complexity of the data itself. So as you move uh, along the x-axis from the left to the right, you get to have more complex queries. And then going from lower, uh, from, top to bo from bottom to top, you actually get more complex data itself. The structure of the data and the relations are far more complex. So, um, for example, in the lower left quadrant is where you um, where using a low complexity with unstructured data, say maybe an Amazon S3 data lake. And you might have a very simple query, such as um, a query by key. And then on the opposite, you have the upper right quadrant where you have a highly complex set of data and relations that you are performing, and you want, you're performing very complex queries of that data. So in this use case, you can use an SQL engine, such as Amazon RDS, or Amazon Redshift or Amazon Athena. And so basically you choose the most appropriate tool for your particular use case. And uh, so now I'll turn over the presentation to Dan Potter, who is the VP of Product Management and Marketing at Infinity. Hey, thank you, Paul. Well, we had a wonderful show at reInvent. Uh, it was a great opportunity for us to meet uh, some existing customers, to hear some of them uh, present, to, uh, to launch some new products. And what I wanted to do today was talk a little bit about some of what we launched uh, and some exciting new announcements that are now available in the Amazon Marketplace. Uh, first, for context, Attunity is a, a data integration vendor. We're focused on helping organizations make that transition to modern analytic environments, like AWS, uh, helping them to move enterprise data, uh, deliver it, and make it available for analytic consumption. Um, we do this in some very unique ways, and we've been doing this for some time. Um, we help organizations, uh, large and small. Um, some of the, the, uh, the customers that were presenting uh, at the show uh, in Vegas uh, were working on some very large, very complex uh, kinds of deployments. Uh, people like Vanguard, who are moving mainframe data, uh, using Amazon Kinesis and building uh, new application code using microservices. Um, so we can handle uh, things, again, that, that are very complex and, and bleeding edge. Um, the Amazon platform provides a, an excellent opportunity for customers once they've moved that data there to be able to take advantage of a wide variety of different processing and analytics engines. Um, one of the announcements that we made uh, is now Attunity Replicate, our flagship uh, data replication product. Uh, the, version, the new version 6 is now available in the marketplace. Um, so it's available on an hourly or annual basis. Uh, it enables you to get started very, very quickly. Uh, customer rating has been uh, through the roof. Uh, so it's a, it's a very good fit, and I'll, and I'll explain why and what the value prop is. Uh, but this was one of the, uh, the announcements. Um, we've been partnered with Amazon for quite a long time. We're uh, very proud of our competencies around big data and, and migration. 
so this is an environment that both it's a wonderful fit uh, technically for customers as they're making these uh, large transformations to data lakes and cloud. Uh, the combination of, of Attunity and AWS really is a, a great fit. Um, and, and here's why. Um, what we provide, again, is a platform for modern analytics. And when we talk about modern analytics, we're talking about organizations that are moving uh, to the cloud or hybrid deployments, uh, taking a data lake mentality in that uh, separating the storage from the analytic processing, um, and taking advantage of modern approaches like streaming, uh, both for real-time analytics and as very efficient ways to distribute data in real time. So our platform uh, helps organizations do this. Replicate is the tool for doing that real-time replication and movement across a wide variety of sources and targets. Our Compose product uh, transforms the data and makes it available uh, immediately for analytic consumption. Uh, it works hand-in-hand -hand with the data replication. So as data is, is ingested and updated, uh, Compose automatically creates the data structures and, and makes it available. And visibility gives you the insight on data usage uh, so that you can do capacity planning, chargeback, performance monitoring. Um, and all this is available uh, in a modular fashion so you can get started very simply with something like the, uh, the marketplace offering and then add more functionality and scale up to whatever size you need to over time. Our core value proposition uh, is really threefold. One, we built it to be simple. We built it to, to literally um, click your way to end-to-end -to -end automation of moving data from these transaction systems uh, into the cloud. Uh, we handle all the data extraction, uh, the mapping, the loading. Uh, we're able to do this uh, at very, very high scale uh, in cloud optimized. And I'll, I'll explain that in, in just a moment. Um, part of the special sauce for us is the way in which we capture changes to these enterprise transaction systems in real time. Uh, it's an approach called change data capture, where we're monitoring the, the change logs or the transaction logs uh, of these data sources. And we're capturing these changes and we're pushing these changes and only the changes uh, across the network uh, into your Amazon store. Uh, we do this without requiring any software to be installed or maintained on those source systems. So it's a zero source footprint, very easy to get started. Uh, and you're creating live uh, updates and live data streams from your transactional systems. Uh, and the fact that we cover uh, a wide variety of different platforms, sources, and targets, and I'll, I'll share with you the list in just a moment, but our, our goal and our value is to really future-proof you, uh, enable you to leverage the existing investments that you have in these transactional sources, relational databases, data warehouses, mainframes, SAP systems, and others, uh, enable you to leverage those investments and that data into these uh, modern analytic infrastructures like AWS. Uh, the kind of four areas that we're focused on providing solutions for AWS, the first is around migrating data. And we can migrate data both directly to S3 and move it directly into relational database services. Um, we can uh, ingest and automate data pipelines for uh, Amazon EMR and Hive, and I'll go through each one of these. Uh, we can move the data into cloud data warehouses, including Redshift, uh, Snowflake, and Teradata, available on AWS. Uh, and again, we can publish real-time uh, database transactions that change data capture. It's creating uh, database events that get published into Kinesis and allow you to stream that data. So along these four different solution areas, I'll, I'll go into a little bit more depth to give you a, a sense of what we do. The first on migrating data, um, as we move data across the network, um, this is where change data capture works really well because we're, we're sending the changed data across the network. So it's a very efficient way to do that. Uh, furthermore, we compress the data. Uh, we've got multi-pathing, so you can uh, create a scalable uh, data pipeline. Uh, we support encryption. Uh, so you're uh, securely and efficiently sending things uh, over to AWS uh, across a wide area network. The, uh, the second thing we talked about for data migration uh, is the breadth of sources and targets. Again, uh, on the top, the, the types of sources that we support, these are, are all your primary transaction systems, databases, data warehouse, 
uh, mainframes, SAP applications, ECC and HANA. Um, sources can include uh, Hadoop uh, or other cloud data sources as well, like RDS. Uh, on the target side, again, we're, we're agnostic as to what the source is and what the target uh, needs to be. The target can be uh, database, data warehouse, certainly cloud, and we'll talk obviously more about where we put it uh, on, on, in Amazon. Um, but the value here, again, is, is the flexibility to be able to move data, uh, whatever data you need, where you need it, in whatever time frame you need it in. So this is the, the, the critical flexibility that organizations need as uh, we're seeing rapidly evolving uh, architecture to support different analytics use cases. Now, when we talk about the move to data lakes, there's, there's two key things that we do here in moving data uh, to Amazon and EMR. Uh, the first piece is the data ingestion, right? So we're landing the data, and this is where Replicate comes in. So we're doing this real-time change data capture. We're moving data uh, into EMR and Hive. Uh, it's a fully automated process to do that. Uh, we use things like time-based partitioning to efficiently uh, write those files and have them consumed by EMR and Hive. The second thing that we do is we create an analytics-ready structure uh, in EMR and Hive. So we're using Hive and, and HQL. We automatically generate the scripts to create uh, both a historic data store, an HDS, as well as an operational data store. So we're automatically, based on the, the, the metadata of the source systems, we're automatically creating that schema and that structure. And we're populating the data as it lands from Replicate, we're populating it uh, into Hive. So the value here is that we handle all of the inserts, updates, and deletes as they're happening on the backend side. Uh, we handle all of the metadata changes as well. So you've got complete resiliency as your source systems change. So if you change a a table or a column in a table. Uh, we're continuously monitoring uh, those changes. We're, we're pushing those changes back into EMR Hive, uh, and we're making the, uh, the requisite changes uh, in your data lake. So this means that there's no uh, scripting, there's no uh, uh, concerns that you have to worry about about monitoring those source systems. We handle all of that end-to-end -end pipeline automation for you. And, and that's, uh, this is a new offering that we announced uh, at, at the show. Uh, great value here as you're making the move to a data lake. Um, when people, you know, what we've seen is that you know, people think about landing the data first and say, okay, what do I do next? Uh, one of the challenges is how do I get that data in a structure that can be either further refined, like moved into a data mart, uh, or analyzed directly. Uh, we handle Again, all of that, the, the changes to the data, the continuous data updates and responding to source data structure changes. Um, this enables you to you know, point and click your way to a fully automated data pipeline uh, and spend your time focused on analytics and not on uh, data integration. Another target for us uh, are, is Redshift and other cloud data warehouses. Again, we not only can move that data and create uh, analytics-ready structure, but we can also create uh, the, uh, the, the data warehouse structure as well. And we do that based on a model-driven approach. Um, so again, we completely remove uh, all of the, the manual ETL and scripting, um, and we automate that function. So with, uh, with Attunity, you can go end-to-end -end from accessing source data uh, landing that data, creating uh, the uh, data structure in Redshift, and continuously populating that data. Another area we talked about is streaming. This is another new announcement for us, uh, the support of Amazon Kinesis. Um, our approach to change data capture creates database events. So as, tra as a transaction happens on these backend systems, uh, you're effectively generating a real-time event. We're now, you can think about it as us turning your transactional systems into stream generators. Um, and we've got the unique capability of supporting not only Kinesis, but if you want to, if you want to publish to other um, streaming engines as well, it may be uh, Kafka, uh, it may be uh, Azure Event Hubs or, or um, MapR or, or other uh, streaming engines. Again, our unique ability to generate an event 
once you decide where you want to publish um, these events into which streaming engine, um, and we handle all of that in a transparent fashion. Um, we provide both the data and the metadata. So we support JSON and Avro message formats, and we create separate topics for the metadata. So it makes it very easy for uh, for someone to consume uh, a stream of information coming from Attunity. The final piece of the platform here, it's around global management and control. Uh, a couple things. Uh, one is that most, most deployments, uh, they may start on-prem or they may start in the cloud. Um, almost always as they start to get large, there's multiple data centers. They may be hybrid deployments. Uh, you may be running multiple uh, instances of the, the replication server. Uh, we provide a single console that enables you to manage multiple data centers, regardless of where they reside, uh, enables you to, to fully manage these servers, to scale to thousands of tasks, all from a, a single console. Um, it provides you with uh, granular levels and role-based security, uh, full audit trails and logging, um, allows you to really manage the end-to-end the -end pipeline uh, across very large global deployments. The second thing that we've introduced here, uh, and, and this is new, it's around providing uh, more advanced analytics to understand the data pipeline as it's moving. So we're providing uh, both historical views and near real-time views of activity that's happening as you're moving data. Uh, it allows you to, to visually uh, see and, uh, and to be able to respond to things, uh, capacity planning, understanding activity and traffic, uh, understanding uh, data volumes and data peaks. Um, it enables you uh, to, at, at every step of, of, of the way, we're capturing operational metadata. Uh, and this is metadata that, that we retain and, and make available as part of the platform. Um, so again, the, the Utility platform really is uh, an end-to-end -end, uh, solution for uh, ingesting and, and replicating data into AWS, processing that data, and making it available for analytics and, and managing deployments uh, of any scale. Uh, and it, with the new announcement of Replicate version 6 now available in the AWS marketplace, it makes it very, very easy for you to get started. Uh, simple, um, uh, you know, one-click turn on uh, and pay by the hour. Again, we've been doing this for some time. Um, Customers like Fanatics uh, have been using Attinity on AWS uh, for a long time. Again, the, the value here is uh, the simplicity by which we enable organizations to access uh, and move disparate data in making that data immediately available and analytics ready uh, for real-time decision making. Uh, this is uh, something that we do day in and day out for our customers on AWS. Uh, before we jump into Q&A, and I'll invite you now to start uh, typing your questions away at, at the console, um, the, uh, the next steps, the recommended next steps. One, you can try and buy Attunity Replicate in the marketplace now. So there's a, a free trial available. Um, I know that's not an easy URL for you to click through, <laughs> but if you go to the Amazon Marketplace and search Attunity, you'll find us easily. Uh, you can also try AWS for free. So this is a, a great way to get started, uh, both with AWS and with Attinity Replicate on AWS, uh, and to begin to experience the, the value and the power uh, of, of Attinity on AWS. It really is a, a match made in heaven because um, the elasticity, uh, scalability, and the availability of, uh, of the different types of tools on the AWS platform, together with the ease in which you can move data uh, transactional data with Attunity into AWS and the unique change data capture approach, which is uh, uh, really well suited for moving data over a wide area network into the cloud. Uh, great way for you to get started. Uh, so we'll move into Q&A. Melissa, if you want to help moderate that. I would be happy to. Uh, thanks, Dan and Paul. That was a great session. Um, we do have a couple of questions here, and I did want to remind everyone, too, that we will be sharing a copy of the slides for anyone who's interested after, so you won't have to navigate that, um, that link that Dan was just talking about. You can just click through it. 
Um, the first question looks like it's for Paul. Um, Paul, can you describe the steps required to create an S3 data lake, please? Sure, uh, I can be happy to do so. Um, so it's actually fairly simple. Um, for an S3 based data lake is really where you're storing all your data in S3 buckets. Now, um, obviously a data lake um, is not it's more than just data. You need to have uh, your a, a, a some way to to learn about the data itself and where you have things. You catalog it and you'll have metadata storage. But fundamentally, all it really comes down to as uh, simple as setting up um, a bucket or two uh, within your uh, AWS account and moving your data into there, um, whether it's structured or unstructured. Um, how you organize it and how you catalog it. Um, there are uh, obviously uh, Trinity can help with that as well as other services can help you um, figure out what you have in there. But the, the idea of the data lake is it becomes your single source of truth um, for all your data, whether it's your source data or even your derivative data. Uh, you want to make sure that you, you don't have multiple sources to figure out which data is the correct data you want to work with. So um, consolidation of data into a data lake has a lot of advantages for you. And storing it on Amazon S3 makes it available to uh, other application downstream from the pipeline. For example, um, you know, if you want to move the data into Amazon EMR using uh, uh, EMR FS, which can read data from S3, or if you want to, um, uh, you know, access the data through queries through Amazon uh, Redshift Spectrum or Amazon uh, Athena, uh, and use that data, make it available through uh, various tools that Trinity can help as well with that. Very good, thank you, Paul. Uh, it was a great explanation. Uh, Dan, this is uh, a question for you. Uh, the question is, how does Attunity CDC work with Kafka messaging streams exactly, and what are the benefits? So uh, it's pretty simple from, from our perspective. Again, the change data capture is, is capturing changes at the transaction system level. So every time there's an insert, update, and delete, uh, we're picking up that, the change, both the data and metadata. Uh, and we're publishing these as events, um, so we're a publisher into uh, a stream. Um, we publish two things. We publish both the metadata uh, as a topic, and we publish uh, the, the the message itself. Um, so it's it's really simple. <laughs> There's no absolutely no coding. It's it's uh, when when you uh, define a replication task with Attunity. You're, you click on the source you want to uh, move, and you click on the target. In this case, you click on a target, which is Kafka. Um, you're you're uh, logging into the, the server, and then you're defining uh, the topics that you want to publish to. That's it. But the value, and again, the value of this is that you can consume this data through streaming analytics, so you can start to do more real-time analytics. Um, there's a value in microservices in being able to uh, re-engineer applications uh, and moving data from back-end transaction systems like a mainframe uh, and making that data available in real time uh, to, uh, to new applications. This is what uh, Vanguard presented at the reInvent show, uh, a really, I think, powerful combination of change data capture on the mainframe, which we provide, publishing uh, into Kinesis, uh, and then creating the new microservices applications on the new on, on the AWS platform. Um, that's that's uh, another value prop, and and the third value prop is is you know now I've got a very flexible way in which I can do data integration. It's no longer point to point. I can uh, create um, data into uh, my Kinesis pipeline, and I can make it available to any and all consumers that need to uh, get at that information. So it's very very flexible and fast. Great, thanks, Dan. Uh, the next question is for Paul, and it, it is, if I have hundreds of terabytes or more of data, how do I move it to AWS? Great, um, that's actually a fairly common problem and question we're asked. Um, and you have, you, have, you have multiple options in how you do this. Um, obviously, um, if you have an on-prem environment uh, connecting uh, using uh, Amazon Direct Connect would be a great, good way to bridge your data center into AWS. And then you can use uh, TDP Replicate, for example, to move that data over into your, um, into your data lake or into your other downstream systems such as a database or a Hadoop platform. Um, then that's great for, um, for 
you know, maybe a couple hundred terabyte stuff depends on if you're trying to do real time or if you're actually trying to get from a, from a point in time to a, like a migration of a very, very large scale. So we do offer a couple other services, um, no, notably around uh, moving large amounts of data into AWS. Uh, it's, it's, one is called uh, Snowball, which is a 80, 80th terabyte of clients that you plug into your network that you then can um, load up the data and then ship it via FedEx to AWS, and then the data is loaded into your S3 uh, buckets uh, for you. And then that that's great for you know for if you want to move 100 terabytes at one time, um, and you can actually do that. And then you can use tools like Replicate to kind of do the delta changes between that point in time into the into uh, maintain the, the the new data that's being uh, generated on your on-prem services because you can't shut your data center down while you're doing this. Another thing is if you have like petabytes of data, um, we have a, a process, uh, a very similar process to, snow, snow, uh, um, to, um, to Snowball, it's actually called Snowmobile. It's a, uh, a truck that we will drive up to your data center, connect into your data center, and you can put 10, 10, 10 petabytes of data onto this truck, and then truck just drives up to um, AWS uh, location and loads the data onto S3 for you. Um, this process, you know, moving 10, 10 petabytes of data over even a direct connect or multiple direct connects will take a long time. So this can help you do a, a point in time migration of a large amount of data and then you can use tools like Replicate to keep the changes of data that's still happening while you're operating uh, on your on-prem environment uh, and keep that data refreshed uh, in your S3 buckets as well. Very good, Paul. Uh, there's actually a, a, a kind of a follow-on question uh, to that. Is my data in my S3 data lake available in multiple regions? Um, so by default, it's not. Um, it's basically uh, S3 is a bucket is assigned to a region, but we have a feature called cross-region replication, which uh, it's as simple as clicking a little uh, a, a little button on our console. And once you do that, the data is automatically copied to a different region. And this can be um, a, a great way to have your data available for of a DR type of purpose. It's not necessarily meant for real-time um, uh, data availability, but uh, it will move your data to another region uh, for um, for uh, you know primarily for DR. If you want, if you if a region has a problem, you can switch to a different region and have data available. Or if you want to see the new region with data. To to bring up a new application somewhere else, you can move the data using uh, uh, using the cross-region replication. Super, thank you. Um, Dan, I believe the next question is for you. Um, does Attunity support SAP data integration into AWS? The answer is yes, we do. So we support uh, ECC and, and all the modules uh, for SAP. Uh, we're also moving into um, beta uh, for SAP HANA, so using HANA as a source and moving and change data capture format uh, HANA data into uh, AWS. So again, we can move it directly into S3, we can move it into RDS or the, the data stores, we can move it into uh, data warehouse uh, like Redshift, and we can also move it into um, the creation of a, of a Duke data lake by moving it into EMR and Hive and further refining that. So lots of different options and our approach to SAP, we've got um, deep expertise around uh, SAP metadata and helping organizations not only unlock the data that's, that's in SAP, but also make it very easy for business users to understand the metadata and consume uh, the data that you're moving over. So it's a, it's a very unique offering. We've got over 200 um, users, uh, customers, SAP customers who are using Attunity today to unlock data for analytics uh, and other use cases. So um, it's, it's a great fit for AWS as well. Great, thanks, Dan. Uh, I think we have one more question for you, Dan. Um, the question is, what is the licensing model? Is it core-based or user-based? Ah, the good old pricing question. All right, here's the easy answer. On, on AWS with the marketplace, it's hourly. Um, so it's a simple way to get started. You can either do it hour by hour or there's also an annual uh, option. Um, if you wanted to take a bring your own license approach, 
um, the way in which we license uh, the replicate products, uh, it's done based on the capacity of the source system. Uh, so it's the number of cores. Um, so it's a very simple metric. Um, define what data that you want to move, and we give you the flexibility to move it uh, to whichever targets uh, you desire. Great. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Dan. Paul, I think that was our last question, so uh, we're going to be able to wrap up a little bit early today. Um, I want to thank both of you for a fantastic session. Uh, thank all the, the audience for great questions and all their attention, and I uh, want to wish everybody a great day. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.